The standby flight instruments are located on the forward panel. They include a standby attitude indicator, a standby airspeed indicator, and a standby altimeter. A standby magnetic compass is located on the center post above the glare shield. Each of these standby indicators use a flat panel liquid crystal display. It is the same type as the other six display units, only smaller. These instruments provide a standby source of critical information in the event of primary display system failure. The standby attitude indicator is powered by the center flight control DC bus. The SARU sends pitch and bank information to the standby attitude indicator. Attitude is the only information provided by this instrument. The standby airspeed indicator is powered by the left flight control DC bus. Two air data modules calculate the airspeed. These dedicated air data modules receive information from the center pitot probe and the standby static system. The standby airspeed indicator has a digital display and a pointer for relative position. Display the standby airspeed bug by pushing the standby airspeed bug selector. A digital display in the upper left corner shows the selected reference airspeed. The associated bug appears along the scale. Turning the standby airspeed bug selector sets the bug to the desired speed. Set the bug to 145 knots. Remove the standby airspeed bug from the display. The left flight control DC bus also powers the standby altimeter. The static system air data module provides altitude information to the standby altimeter. The standby altimeter also has a pointer and a digital display. The selected barometric reference is displayed in hectopascals and in inches of mercury. Pushing the standby barometric selector toggles between standard pressure and the last selected barometric pressure. Display standard pressure. Turning the standby barometric selector sets the desired reference. Now set the standby barometric selector to 1017 hectopascals, which is 3004 inches of mercury. The standby magnetic compass is the liquid type and is internally lighted. A deviation card is located below the compass. Now let's discuss the airplane clocks. The clocks are located on the left and right forward panels. AIMS provides date and universal coordinated time to each clock. The internal clock in AIMS is updated from the GPS satellites. To display universal time, the time date selector is set to UTC. You cannot set the UTC time. Let's use a larger clock as we discuss the clock controls. Besides UTC, the time date selector is also used to display and set the date and local time. When the time date selector is set to manual, the clock set selector is used to set local time and the date. Let's set the local time. Select manual on the time date selector. Use the clock set selector to manually set the clock to 9:10. First, move the clock set selector to the hours position. The hours begin to cycle. 
When the hours reach 9, the clock set selector is immediately moved to the minutes position where the minutes start to cycle. When the minutes reach 10, the clock set selector is immediately moved to the hold position. In the hold position, the clock is stopped. Begin running the new local time by selecting Run. The clock now runs the new local time. Push the time date selector to display the date. The day and month are alternately displayed with the year. The date displayed is June 7, 2008. When the date is displayed in the time date window, the clock set selector is used to change the date by selecting the day, the month, and the year. Changing the date is accomplished the same way as changing the time. For now, push the time date selector to display the time again. The elapsed time selector controls the elapsed time function and the chronograph switch controls the chronograph. The lower window displays elapsed time and chronograph time. In this example, the elapsed time function has been running for 17 hours and 12 minutes. Reset the elapsed time by selecting Reset on the elapsed time selector. The elapsed time selector is spring-loaded to return to the hold position. To begin timing, select Run. The elapsed time window displays only hours and minutes. After one minute of elapsed time, one displays. When you need more accurate timing, such as during non-precision approaches, use the chronograph function. Start the chronograph by pushing the chronograph switch. The chronograph uses a pointer hand to show seconds. Notice that the chronograph does not display hours. Minutes are displayed here and override any previously started elapsed time. When the chronograph is displayed, the elapsed timer runs in the background and is displayed again when the chronograph is reset. Push the chronograph switch again to stop the chronograph. Now, subsequent pushes start, stop, and reset the chronograph again. Notice that the elapsed timer which was running in the background is now displayed. A separate clock switch is located on each end of the glare shield. The clock switch acts as a remote chronograph switch for each of the clocks. This completes the instruction section of the lesson.